If black folks and other indigenous people have contributed so much to this regenerative farming movement, why are we not flourishing? Today, 98% of the farmland is controlled by white folks. It's very challenging to create an alternative existence off of the land when the land itself is deeply commoditized. We knew it wasn't gonna be easy. Historically, it's been really challenging to acquire land. I applied for a bank loan. They hung up on me. I would work every day and come home exhausted, and Jonah would have been out on the land, you know, all day by himself, building and farming. It was hard on our family. In city after American city tonight, thousands of people have once again taken to the streets. What happened with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others is to bring into the forefront race. My bill would end discrimination within the USDA, protect remaining black farmers from land loss. That debt relief has been challenged by white farmers saying that it's unconstitutional. White farmers, they're just suing um, to slow it down. And they're on the wrong side of history on this one. We can't wait, you know, we can't just sit around. We have to take matters into our own hands. We are uniting as one community and working towards a common vision of black land sovereignty. We have our Soul Fire Farming Immersion, which brings together Black, Indigenous, and other people of color. <laughs> we like to think of ourselves as part of a rising generation of Black farmers that is ready to carry on the legacy of the seeds that were braided in our ancestors' hair. I'm feeling excited about it to really go somewhere and see what more of a liberated system looks like. Our generation is realizing that a piece of our culture and a piece of our souls was left behind. And we're now in a position to go back. We may have historically left the land, but the land never left us. We're of the dirt, all of us, regardless of what color or creed we are of the dirt.